build shows on the road. We're outside of Christians in Norway. We're checking out a couple hundred unit student housing project that's being built, believe it or not, in 18 months from contract to key turnover. This is a crazy job. You're gonna see some pedestal framing here, meaning concrete in the first floor and then CLT from above. And this contractor is crazy organized. Let's let my buddies Luke and Jake take over and show you how this project works. Let's get going. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so we are standing in front of something that's laying horizontal, Luke, but this is not gonna be horizontal for long, and Matt was actually standing in front of one of them. So walk me through what he was in standing in front of and then what we have here. Right, so panelization, essentially. You know, as we get more and more complex, and these guys had a really tight construction schedule to me. Yeah, 20 months for 137 units. Right, so they have to get innovative, right? How do we get stuff going and then get it in and put it up like Lego blocks? Yep. So the wall panels is what they're doing that with. So first we gotta get it, first we gotta build it, yep. and then we have to get it to the site. This looks like it got craned off of an 18-wheeler probably, yep. but they're oriented wrong, right? Yeah, so that thing's laying on its side because it's too tall if they're shipping it two floors at a time standing up, right? Correct. So they're laying flat. So we have this crane set up and they hoist the panels from here in the wrong orientation. And they come over here and they lay these down flat. And yep. this might look like a normal table, but we just saw it in use, quite innovative. So once they have it flat on this, they're gonna change their anchor points to the top. Yep. And then as they raise it up, we don't wanna do this to the panel, right? Yep. It's probably not designed for that load. And so this whole table pivots. Yep. And so we, we equally distribute that weight until we can get it vertical enough so that now we can hoist it up like it's designed to go. So all this thing is is a pick point rotation system. Uh, they've site built this. It actually looks kind of funny. Underneath here right. is just some weak looking uh, sawhorses, but right. it's actually sitting on concrete blocks mm. as well. Those horses are for catching the table when it comes Correct. back down. Uh, but we have an actually fairly complicated wall sitting behind us. We have a like roughly two by eight, two by six between the two wall. Right. It already has a six mil poly on the inside. They're a vapor barrier on the warm side in winter. Correct. Uh, it's a class one vapor barrier. It's pre-insulated, it's pre-wired or pre-conduit. Uh, and then we have a uh, membrane on the outside, which happens to be a, uh, uh, a vapor open material on this side. And then we have, looks like double rain screen here, right? Correct. Correct, ventilated rain screen. We have a ventilated rain screen and we have two floors in this unit. It looks like most of these were two floors at the same si at the same time mm -hmm. with windows already installed. Uh, talk to me about these gaps in the siding we see here. Right, so one of the challenges with panelization is how do you put it together and keep all of your four layers, your control layers integrated and continuous. Yep. So what they decided to do on this one is that they gave us a little bit of work room when the panels come together it's large enough to get some more Sega tape back in there, yep. complete the four layers in, at one time, one place. And then, Jake, tell me about these diagonal pieces. Yeah, so you probably noted, there. it looks like diagonal bracing to keep the panel from racking. It's not, it's that missing piece of cladding. So after that thing gets taped, that piece comes off and then gets renailed, and then that panel gets finished across with just that one board. All of that is a shiplap, so there's mm -hmm. like wiggle room if the panels aren't perfect together. Correct. What an easy, simple solution. And uh, Etienne, our host, pointed out, well, then that board sits there and weathers at the same rate. I'm thinking they're moving quicker <laughs> right. than that. Yeah, you're going to have like one spot that's not weathered. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're upstairs in a dorm room and we're at the rough mechanical stage. And first thing you'll probably notice is this big box here. Um, it's halfway framed in. And you'll notice that there's probably no way, Jake, how did they get it through that door there? <laughs> yeah. This thing's not fitting in this way. It actually would probably not even fit through the opening behind our camera person here. This thing was plug and play from a crane before they went to the next floor. And we've actually seen this on a couple job sites already here in Norway. Uh, this is a bathroom pod. That bathroom's finished. Tile, grout, fixtures, mirror, everything. Wow. Uh, and it's just one way for them to save time, but also save money. Everything is completed and ready to plumb. It sits down on the plumbing, and then you can see here everything for the, the rest of the unit water-wise. This thing plugs into the water from the building, and then everything in this unit 
plugs into it. And so there's water coming out of it. There's water feeding other places in the room. But then the electrical just plugs into it, too. That's it's great. like the most simplistic. We would never think to do this in our jobs. Right. But because you have the ability to just lift and pick. Comes in on a semi, drops in here, and then they keep stacking up above. And speaking of what they've stacked here, talk to me about what we have going on on our walls, our floors, and our ceilings here. Yeah, so this is what we call a cross laminated timber or CLT mass timber construction. Biggest and plywood on earth. That's right. Huge, thick, four, five, six inch plywood that's structural. But then it also goes up again, this whole panelization theme of this project where we've got bathroom pods, we've got wall assemblies. Now, like the interior and structural walls goes up really fast too. We'll see here, sometimes we'll build a mechanical chase essentially. So we've got metal framing. We can run some electrical wire through that. And then in other walls, it looks like they've actually from the factory, uh, part of the yep. BIM modeling that we've seen is that we'll now actually router out a big CNC machine. will give us chases in the right spots yep. to run our probably a kitchen or something right yep. here. So we know that the wall back there was actually a finished gypsum wall. This wall was getting cabinets, so there's no reason for them to frame over this wall. Correct. Because then they only have to treat the space between the upper and lower cabinets. So cost savings here, no frame, no, right. no gypsum. We also have a furred down ceiling, so we can run all of our, our fire suppression systems, more electrical wires. All this gets covered with a drop ceiling. Yep. So we have a one-bedroom unit. We have a bedroom on that side. We have a bathroom mm. and a kitchenette on this side. The floor is CLT, but Correct. it gets a, a gyp creep or a lightweight gypsum on mm -hmm. top of it. They're going to come in with about two inches of a mineral wool product that has a slight waterproofing coat on top of it, and then two, three inches of gyp creep on top yep. of that. And that's a sound. It's not insulating from the floor below. Speaking of sound. <laughs> it's sound and sound there, right? Correct. And we're just stacking. Uh, the, the wall is open. You know, we can hear the street because they're plugging those those uh, panels that we saw downstairs Correct. on the outside, and it just has some uh, like Simpson fasteners that are screwed to our CLT panel that have a vertical, and then all they're doing right. is bolting. Probably them something in here. similar to this right Very here. Very similar, uh, and then all this is sitting on that that concrete platform yeah. from downstairs. Yeah. So we're gonna have retail space below. Just Legos all the way and up, and then CLT above that for was it three or four floors? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really interesting, like, this is as quick as they can do it. This is as simple as they can do it. Absolutely. And all of this is, like, this is super carbon friendly. Like, yeah, the prefab concrete that's downstairs is quick and, and easy, uh, but it's nowhere near as good as for the environment as CLT is. Correct. And we're talking about we're in the Great White North here. We're as far north as Anchorage, Alaska. Wood is really easy to come Real by plentiful. up here. Right. And, and this is not shipped from very far away. This this manufactures in Norway, and like this is a makes a lot of sense when you see it in this environment. Absolutely, speed is the key here. Yeah, 20 months start to finish, 137 Crazy. years. Crazy. So stay tuned for more from Norway. There's a lot coming on this this type of construction here. Okay, guys, now we're upstairs. We saw the panels, how they laid them flat, tilted them up, flew them into the space. Now we're inside. So. This, use, this came in on a trailer, fully assembled, the poly, the rock wool, the framing, the window, everything is a panel. And then as they fly them in, these are the anchors they use to get them in from our friends at Simpson. Uh, but this is what holds it to the wall. I'm not sure if it's load bearing or not, that might be carried down below, but this definitely holds it to the building itself. But it's super quiet in here. This rock wool is doing its job. Even with the batten system on, on the outside, I can't get outside the wind at all. We're upstairs next to an assembled wall that's already been put in place, and I wanted to show off this seam. So it doesn't necessarily line up with the interior partition, and actually I think that's on purpose, because if you look here, we have our continuous vapor barrier, and now all we have to do is put a piece of tape down this. Now that's complete, and now that our air and water is on the outside, we do the same system on the outside. One piece of tape, we can get in there, then cover it up, but this is how we do our seams. Okay, now we track down Ruben. Ruben, your job title is? I'm a BIM manager. BIM yeah. manager. Very so effective. Ruben is uh, the computer god. <laughs> <laughs> we, sat, we sat in the conference room before we walked out here and Ruben showed us some stuff that was super impressive. You guys have a BIM model of the entire project and you said that there were how many points of data? 
Oh, is it 250,000 points? <laughs> I think, yep. Uh, we're building a house, in case you don't know, Luke, uh, right now from eight pages of plans. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so 250,000 points of data. A building like this, everything has to be figured out beforehand. Mm -hmm. You were showing us how on the CLT, uh, we have like the prefabrication. All of these things are routed in. Everything's yep. tracked. But talk to me about like how do you maintain on site that all of this is happening? You were talking about 360 cameras. Yeah, we have uh, helmet mounted 360 cameras. I see the mount on yours. <laughs> yeah, which we every Monday we take a walk through in every door room and every every room of the building and document the progress. Yeah. So we have it, and we use that documentation through the week with the planning and every meeting and everything. And so that, that lays out in your software on the plans. You can yep. click on the plans. It's like Google Street View yeah. is how you were explaining it. Mm. You literally can click and look, and yep. then you can put it next to what the 3D rendering is supposed to be. Yep. And you could call the electrician and go, hey, this is not there. Yep. It's supposed to be there, which is total accountability. I love yep. that. Uh, but you guys also have another system for that, too, where you're not the one that walks around, right? Yeah. We use the Boston Dynamics spot. The dog, robot dog, we can just mount the, the camera on top of it. and I think I'd yeah. be super creeped out if that was walking around <laughs> my job site. Yeah. Uh, and then all of this is, it's laid out in the CLT, but all of this is also available on phones. So you guys yeah. are a paperless job site, right? Yeah. Or we, near paperless? You can print a paper if you want a section of a drawing or something, but we don't have a pub, you know official drawing set out on the job site. Okay, and then you have augmented reality on your phone, yeah. and we can effectively scan yeah. and look at any wall or any room in the building, mm. and you can see what it's supposed to look like. Yep. Can we also see the finished wall of what it's supposed to look like, like an architectural rendering of what no, that's no, supposed to look no, like? No, not with the, on the phone, no. Okay. No, yeah. But so, if we do another software, where you, can, you can get that as well. But so, basically, yeah. any team member that's on site can look at their phone and yeah. go, oh shoot, there's supposed to be something there. And then yeah. they can go to the plans, yeah. look at the details and try to figure out where they're, what they're missing. Our mantra is like, uh, everything knows everything always. Everything so, knows everything always. Because yeah, it's, it's all about information. Have the right information at the right time. That's, so, yeah. that's amazing. If you, if you don't have the answer, you can't perform the work. Yeah, that's no. a great yeah, way to look at it. able to retrieve it quickly, right? Knowing what questions to ask. Mm -hmm and then it taking 10 seconds to get that information versus having to walk down, go to the mm. job site office, come back, making yep. it a 20 minute task. Yeah. Whereas when that's happening, the tradesman that needed that information has now already moved on to the next task. So yep. that is invaluable information. Yep. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. Mm. Okay, Ruben, thank you. No thank problem. you for the site tour today. Let's, uh, yeah. let's go find Matt. Huge thanks to these guys for the tour. I'm sure I'm butchering the name, Ruben, but Vide Videke? Videke. Videke, I totally messed that up. But thank you, Ruben, <laughs> for the tour. And if you guys didn't meet him already, Joanne, the head cheese on the job site, your job site manager, is that your title? Site manager. Site manager. Yeah. And then Alex, you're basically like a site superintendent, right? Yes. And you guys met Kim, a carpenter who got a chance to visit with us today. These guys, very impressive holy cow and this building is going together quick i think i said 18 months at the beginning of the video but it's actually 20 months right reuben 20 total months from breaking ground to moving in doing some really high quality work here and big thanks to our friends at sega for getting all of us from the build show out to this amazing job site i'll put links to all these guys below in the description so you can go follow them on instagram and of course hit that subscribe button we've got new content here every tuesday and every friday Follow us on Facebook or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on, on The, the Build Show. Show.